Hello, welcome to this part of the tutorial. Like I said, we're going to look at how we do how, how to generate lift curves and um, possibly export them for use with other third parties of TWS like Eclipse, um, Virtual Expert, that is um, GAP, and Embal, and and other third parties of TWS. So I am using this model, which I um, this is um, a cast model. I think the last tutorial I did. Um, it actually models a dry and wet gas so this is how we have dry and wet gas and uh, producer and all that so we'll look at the IPR section and this is what we have UF of 52 million standard cubic feet skin of 5 and it's actually um, yeah I don't want to save it's a vertical well I think so yeah, it's a vertical well, and then yes, I understand. Go to next. Okay, cancel this and continue. Okay, so we have a tubing and a casing, so everything looks okay. Uh, let's look at this. Let's look at the flow rate which we add. Okay, top node pressure 500, gas ratio, water gas ratio zero. Condensate gas ratio 5 and um, I'll say something about this condensate gas ratio as we proceed. Okay, we are using um, Petroleum Expert for the vertical lift correlation and all that. So let's continue. No sensitivity calculated. And uh, we have a gas rate of 19.879, let's about 20 million standard cubic feet. Billions are per day. Okay. And if we plot, this is what we have. System plot will give us this. Wow. Okay, so this is actually a lift curve. Um, that's the vertical lift performance. But we could also do some sort of sensitivity. Or the question is, what variables actually affect these lift curves, and um, how do we know how our tubing will be performing in the future? That is what we want to look at. So let's go back. Okay, so you could use this button, but I'll explain that now. Now, what are lift curves? Lift curves express the pressure drop across the tubing. So that's just that. So it actually affects what is happening at your tubing. So you know, tubing is responsible for getting the fluid upright. So it, it actually it has to do with the, the pressure drop across the tubing and you know this pressure drop is essential the pressure drop uh, is essential it actually affects your flow rate and all that your production at the surface so that is what we want to look at for a given set of variables now one thing you have to note is um, all softwares do not have the same name for what we're about to do we're calling we say these are lift curves right some softwares like the one i'm using now petroleum um prosper petroleum expert calls it VLP that is vertical lift performance we also have softwares that call it VFP that is vertical flow performance and um, I also have a software that calls it tubing performance data that is TPD and that software calls it TPC that is tubing performance curve but whatever it's called you just know whether VLP VFP TPD TPC it means the same thing it's the same lift curve we are talking about now okay so let's continue now what are the variables that affect this or what variables are needed to correctly model this we have about four variables but um, uh, most times what you see is three I'll explain why the four variables are your gas rates of course you need a gas rate you need your well head flowing pressure uh, sometimes it can be called the first node pressure and you also need the water gas ratio the WGR you need your condensate gas ratio now since you're modeling what we're doing here is actually dry and wet gas by definition the condensate gas ratio should be constant of course unless you're dealing with retrograde gas condensate that is that condition then we can consider we'll of course your condensate gas ratio will not be constant then but we're dealing with dry and wet gas so your CGR should be constant of course as a petroleum engineer that is what you ought to know and then also um, the gas rate is most times it's not considered why because you cannot talk about flow rate I mean sorry your pressure without considering flow rate 
So since these two are actually they go on and on, they are almost the same. Or they depend on each other. We take one of them, which is a pressure. I think that is actually more important. The pressure will affect the flow rate, right? So we take the well air pressure. We take the water gas condensate ratio. Then we take the condensate gas ratio. Like I said, CGR is constant for this scenario. Well, if you're doing retrograde gas, then you know it shouldn't be constant. Okay. So let's continue. Now to um, do your VL, um, VLP. That's what this software calls it. We go to calculation and then we come here VLP. Tuning cough. So vertical lift performance. So I'm using three variables. And of course, you can use more than that, multi variables and all that. Like I said, under I have a tutorial on sensitivity. You can do it for any number of variables. You can choose a multi variable. Let's go back and see what's happening. Let's say, for instance, if you're here, you can choose 3, 4, or the multi variable. The same thing here 3, 4, or multi variable. So you can combine within number of variables. But 3 is um, essential. Well, that should be okay. Now, my top node pressure is at 500. But our gas ratio is at zero and then my CGR is at five. Okay, so I'm using the correlation bex for the surface, of course, you're not even modeling surface here. So for the VLP I'm using Petrin Experts 2 and red method linear. Okay, that's no problem. First node is X mastery, of course. And the last node is the casing that is at our reservoir depth, which is five thousand. Okay, so let's see if you change this to user selected the red meter. Okay, so if you have this rates, you can just you could just populate this. You can just populate this, but let's take it back to okay. let's take it back to automatic linear. Okay, you also have to note something: the cast with the red type, which Red type do you think will affect your production most? And I think the gas rates. Let's allow this to be there. And we continue. So what variables are we choosing? Like we said, we need the first node pressure, we need the water gas ratio, and then we need the condensate gas ratio. Now I could just input those values one by one, but I have something that can generate the values for me. So now how do you determine the range of values to enter? Sentence. Now for my well, the the reservoir pressure is at two thousand five hundred, right? It's at two thousand five hundred. So what informs our choosing of the the range of values to include here? It's um the first value should actually denote the the minimum, the smallest value which you should have or you can have smallest value possible. Well, the last value should denote the maximum value possible. So the smallest value for my pressure should be about 50 PSIG, of course. Okay, and then the last value for flow to be possible should be about 2,000. Let's take 2,200. And the number of steps I need is just 10, of course. I have 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 10. So I'm using linear spacing, but you could use any of this. I generate and it goes that for me. My water gas ratio. Now, now, what also informs your choosing of the range for this one? Now, uh, it depends on the drive mechanism. If the drive mechanism is cast, then you're expecting very little water to produce little water. If the drive mechanism is bottom water drive, then you expect you should expect very high. Um, WGR. So we're just gonna model just taking value. Uh, let's look. Our model is actually gas, gas driven. So I am gonna take, but I'll still take a large value in case something happens in the future. So I'm gonna take from zero to about three hundred. Okay, that's actually small. Okay, three hundred billion. So the standard to be fit and I'll take 10 values for that and generate that and then my condensate gas ratio like I said this should be constant so I just put in a value and uh, we continue so what next uh, the only thing the next thing I have to do is to continue and then calculate 
And um, oh, the calculation is proceeding. Okay, so we we'll just wait for some time and this calculation will be done in the meantime. Okay, maybe we'll just pause this and come back when there we're done with the calculation. So let's go pass. Okay, so we are done, the calculation is complete. And it took about 36 seconds to do that. Okay, so the next thing is uh, I would want to just view this to see how it is. Normally a lift curve should be like um, in the form of uh, a J or like this mark maybe a correct this correct sign. Yeah. Oh, sorry for that. So let's just plot this and see how it goes. Oh, it has that shape. And it is also smooth. Okay, so gas rate against pressure. So I think what we have is um, actually very wonderful. It's good. The next thing we do is we could export. So you come here, click on export, and then you choose the format. So we could use Slumbridge Eclipse or well drill, Exxon Mobil, Picasso's, um, and all that. Or you could just export for Petron Expert so that you can use in your GAP or Ember. Okay, now let me also say something. Let me say something here. What if you have this? Is we're just modeling just a single well and you're doing this? What if you have many wells and uh, you want to generate lift curve for all of them? So, what do you do? Do you go manually generate for one, generate for the other? So, in a situation like that, what you do is you use um, a software like GAP. Now, what GAP does is GAP. Um, actually models the entire network, the surface, the downhole, both the reservoir and the well, and then the surface too, where you have your uh, you have your network, you have your pipes and all that. So GAP, now what GAP does is, since you'll be having multi wells, you model multi wells in GAP, so GAP will inform Prosper to generate the networks for all the wells, for all the wells you have in that particular GAP model. So instead of doing it manually, GAP will automate the process for you. And then also you could also, uh, you can actually change uh, the variables you're using. You could select the variables there in GAP too and everything will just be automated for you. And you can run it overnight instead of just staying awake and clicking buttons and all that. Okay. So let's just see how this can be, how the lift curve will look like if you're generating it for GAP. So I'll continue to generate for GAP and MBAL. And then um, it's asking me to save. So let's take it to desktop and save as um, VLP. TPD. okay, no problem. So we save and this is how it looks like. Oh. I see this is the um, CSV file. These are CSV values, comma separated values. Okay. No problem. It's nice. Okay. So that's how it looks like. We could also look at how it will look like for software like Eclipse. The table number that. So I'll just continue. And I'll call it VLP2. But this is with that ECL um, extension. And then um, how, how does it look like? Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, so that's how to do that. So that's how to generate this and how to export it. So we are done with that. And um, I got to name. Thank you very much for watching. Please do also subscribe, ask your questions, and um, share the video if it's informative. And like, please, subscribe to get updates when I post new videos. Thank you very much.